What's up guys, I thought I'd make a random video answering one of the most common questions I get and it's how do you ship those things? And I thought Madison Square Garden would be the perfect one to show you because it has almost 10 different pieces. It's gonna be a very hard, my children, they're perfectly silent. And then the second I try to record something, loud, super loud. Anyways, there's several different pieces to Madison Square Garden so it's gonna be a really hard one to package so it'll be the perfect one to show you how I do it. So one of the first things to understand is these are actually pretty durable. I mean, yeah, they're made of paper, but they're not gonna break just from shaking everything like that. So I'm not really concerned about that when I, when I ship these. What I'm concerned about is getting, <laughs> getting crushed. You see my son's hand there. What I'm concerned about is them getting crushed or getting, getting water damaged. So I have a solution to that. Plastic totes. So what this does is, unless there's a ton of pressure put on top of this, it's not gonna crush it and it's gonna keep uh, moisture out. The next thing I gotta do is I gotta make sure the stadium isn't bouncing around inside of here because that's really the only other way it's gonna get destroyed when it's shipping. So I'm gonna take off every piece that might bounce around. So obviously all the inserts are separate, the roof is separate, and then something you might not have noticed if you watched the whole build is this little tunnel here, it actually comes off because the battery's hidden behind it. And I don't want the battery bounce around either. So I, I, I talked to the guy that I'm sending this to it's going all the way to the New York area, and I don't want this battery bouncing around when it's shipping, so I just told him, uh, sorry, battery's not included. So if I could reach in there, it's actually pretty snug underneath the stadium here. But maybe I don't even need to record this, but you get the idea. I'm gonna take the battery out, and I'm not gonna ship the battery with it because I don't want that bouncing around inside the stadium when it's shipping. The solution to that is I'm gonna twist tie it down inside the stadium. And go on Amazon, you can buy twist ties in bulk, and I'm gonna need a bulk of twist ties to secure all this stuff, because I can't have any of it bouncing around when it's shipping. All right, so I'm actually going to be securing the model to the roof, or the uh, lid of the, of the uh, tote, and I'll be setting the tote upside down. Uh, that's just because there's more room at the top of the tote than at the bottom of the tote, I flip it up to give it more room where the model's gonna be. So as you can see here, I already did it off camera in a couple takes that my kids ruined from being super duper loud. But I have some dots here. I'm gonna be drilling some holes here, and that's where I'm gonna thread the twist ties to to hold down the paper stadium, paper arena in this case. All right, I got all those holes drilled for the arena to hold down. I actually drilled some holes to put some of the inserts on here. So now as you'll see, let me show you how I attach the arena. So. Like I said over and over again, I'm going to be threading twist ties through those holes. So if I can set up a better camera angle, I'm just gonna have to cut and do a better camera angle. Look at that, better camera angle. All right, so thread it through one side of the hole, thread it through the other side of the hole. Pull it pretty tight. I'm reaching underneath the bottom, pull it pretty tight. And then I'm twist tying it on the bottom. I could get it. And then these holes, I'm gonna cover up with some masking tape when I'm done. Again, maintaining that moisture barrier. Uh, I've had packages, not my packages for paper stadiums, but you know, if they leave them, they're not supposed to leave them outside, but you know, you can never really trust them too much. If they left them outside or something, I wanna make sure it's 100% watertight in case it got rained on or something like that. So I'll be covering these holes up with masking tape. So there you go, there's one of the twist ties. I'll put one in every corner here in a time lapse, and then I'll also attach the inserts to the lid. So let's do that. All right, so we got it all strapped down. As you can see, no matter how much I shake it, it's really not going anywhere. And like I said, once I have this, uh, the box stops it from being crushed and stops it from getting wet, my kids are playing with dinosaur toys, the next biggest fear is that it's just gonna bounce around inside, so zip tying it down means once I put it inside that tote, it's not gonna bounce around. Now, we're gonna hit a time lapse while I zip tie all the other attachments inside of the tote. So 
So I got every last element of paper mask and square guard secured inside the plastic tote. The next thing I gotta do after I close, close it in here, so let's do that. That's kind of a satisfying thing to watch. And then close it all up. And my next biggest fear about shipping these is that like a jarring hit is gonna break any of these zip ties loose and cause them to bounce around. So the last thing I'm gonna do before I box this up is I'm gonna wrap it in some bubble wrap. So like I said, if somebody dropped, the package gets dropped, it hits something on a conveyor belt, it'll absorb some of those hits and hopefully help out so nothing gets shaken loose. I actually ran right at the end of my roll of bubble to, uh, tape, bubble packaging, whatever this is called, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. I ran at the end of my roll of bubble wrap, so there's this little square right at the top that's exposed, but really I'm more concerned about like the corners. That's where the most impact's gonna be. And I always fold it up on the corners to put a lot of impact. Now, yeah. it's time to put, what? What? Yeah. I get what cookie I get. My kids are making Play-Doh cookies. They are delicious. All right, it's time to box it up. The goal here is to box it up as tight as possible for two reasons. Number one, the tighter it is, the more secure the package is gonna be. Number two, the smaller the package is, the more I save on shipping. So I always pay for shipping for my clients. It's just kind of uh, when you're charging them so much, I can handle shipping. But I mean, if I can save myself 10, 15 bucks, I'm definitely gonna try and save myself 10, 15 bucks. And I've gone to the post office before, and if it's just a little too big, too big, you can end up paying a lot of, uh, in shipping. So I'm gonna try and package this as tight as I possibly can here in this box. taping it all up as somewhat of an artist. I want it to look pretty. Uh, and really like I want the, you know, I'm sending this package with something pretty expensive in it. I want the, peep, the post office to respect what's being sent, but this kind of looks like a hodgepodge box that's mashed together. So it kind of drives me nuts, but it'll get the job done. I'll take this, put a couple of Fragile stickers on it. That's gonna be the last step. Let me do that real quick. Italian. All right, I have it all packaged up. This bad boy is ready to ship. In Warren's in trouble. It's kids, I don't even know if I'm framed it. I don't know if you can see my face, but all packaged up, ready to ship. I'm gonna send it through the United States Postal Service. Boys, hey sweethearts, can you give me two more seconds? Yes. Thank you, you're lovely, thank you. Through the United States Postal Service, I'll have it in the mail on Monday. It'll be there on Wednesday, and the client will get to see their very own paper, Madison Square Garden. Everybody have a good day, and I don't know how to sign off on my videos, so I'll pull up Michael Scott. I'll catch you on the flippity flips.